Welcome to everyone. I am William, part of the marketing team at Brainstar. Tonight, I will be the moderator of this event. Also, here is Philip Bogdanovsky, who will handle all the technical details to make sure you get the best experience. Before um, I introduce the speaker, uh, I just want to say that you can ask questions uh, throughout the whole event here in the Zoom chat. We have a dedicated 15-minute Q&A session at the end, but don't don't hold up. You can write questions as as they come to you to not to not have anything missed. Now, the person that we are all here for tonight, Sandra Benbo. Sandra is a seasoned enterprise educator with over 15 years in areas in areas like consulting, com commercial strategy, and business model innovation. She has mentored over 400 startups and business leaders and holds roles at Aston University at, in the United Kingdom. Additionally, at our, our big pleasure, she's now part of the instructor team at, at our Executive Academy for Leadership and Management. Um, I'm sure tonight you will learn a lot from from Sandra. Even going into some details that will that will be studied at the academy itself. If you find value in what you will learn today and in the in the management and leadership business field, um, and want to advance to the next step in your career, I will share more information about the academy itself at the end of this event. Uh, we had some some questions on the emails that we sent out to you uh, on the on the modules and in, and uh, instructors part. So I will make sure to to cover to cover those things at the end. Also scholarships. So um, I'll cover them at the part at the end. Without any further ado, I would hand it over to Sandra to take over the stage. Thank you very much, William, and thank you for the uh, kind introduction. Um, so good evening, everyone, and, and welcome. And it's great to see that there are so many of you here this evening. Um, I'm delighted to be with you and I'd um, like to welcome you to this taster session. So tonight's session has been designed as a mini lesson to give you a real flavour of what to expect if you are to join the Executive Academy for Leadership and Management. So it's a, it's a flavour of the digital and organisational transformation module which is the module I will be teaching at the Academy. So I do ask you to participate in today's session so you can sit back and relax, but please listen and please ask questions, as William said, as we go through. But I'd also, I'm also going to get you thinking. So uh, please be prepared to, to put your uh, thoughts into today's chat. So I'll just uh, move on to the uh, introduction. Uh, so uh, William's already told you a little bit about me, but um, I'll just give you a full introduction uh, now. So um, I am delighted to be an instructor at the Executive Academy. I was in uh, Skopje uh, during the spring and I spent three weeks in your lovely country, uh, seeing some of the sites and also getting to know the, the Brainster team. So it's great to be part of a team that's really passionate about um, vocational training and education and, and employability. So it, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to meeting all the new students in October. October. Um, I spent most of my career working within the higher education sector in, um, in the UK, um, predominantly at Aston University, and um, I worked really closely with um, startup organisations, helping them to develop new value propositions and, and uh, really take their sort of ideas and make that reality. Um, I've also mentored uh, many small and medium sized companies and probably most recently over the last five years, I've been heavily involved in working with global manufacturing companies, developing new uh, service innovation. Um, as William said, I've got 15 plus years of experience in consulting. Um, you can see on the screen some of the areas where I specialise um, and also um, in business model innovation. So obviously that is going to be today's uh, today's topic. Um, I'm a senior industrial fellow and servitization advisor at Aston Business School. So this is where I work with the global manufacturers and uh, it's really helping them design uh, new value propositions and new business models um, around uh, outcome based um, contracts. So taking a, um, a 
from a product focus really to a services focus. Um, I'm also a digital innovation expert at the United Nations, so I work with uh, European governments and support them to um, accelerate uh, digitization across their ecosystem. And most recently, I was um, working with the government in Macedonia to complete this report, which is now live on the UN website and will be one of the topics as well of the, the module that I cover. Um, I did my MBA at Aston University. Um, it wasn't too long ago, it was in 2019. Um, I was working full time at, uh, at the university and studying part time. So I've got a lot, of, a lot of empathy for you guys who are thinking about coming on to the academy. I know how tough it is, but also how rewarding it can be to be a student as well. Um, I'm, I am actually from the UK, so originally from the UK, um, but I'm now based uh, near Hamburg in Germany. So I've been over in Germany, trying my best to learn German for the last three and a half years. So that's a, that's a brief introduction to myself. Um, so what I thought I'd do really to kick off is just to give you a bit of an overview of the module that I'll be teaching on the programme and also how the session today fits into that um, overall programme. So this session is, uh, this module is really focused on digital and organisational transformation. Um, and it's broken down into nine lectures and, and these will be the first, uh, first module that starts in October. So first of all, we're really looking at um, digital disruption on a global scale. Um, so really trying to understand how um, the, the macro environment, the trends that are happening at the moment are impacting on business strategy and how we're operating our businesses. Um, in the next session, I say we'll focus in a bit more locally. We'll look at the, uh, the Macedonian ecosystem and how this can support us in developing our new value propositions and our new business ideas on a local scale before we scale up globally. Uh, lecture three is about competitive strategy and again how digital and technology is impacting on strategy and in, in businesses and then we spend two, two, mod, uh, two lectures looking at customer value proposition design. And this is really to give you an understanding of the process and what's involved, but also to give you the opportunity to create a new value proposition, which you potentially uh, could launch at the end of this module. Um, lecture six and seven is business model innovation. So you're gonna get a taster for that today. And this is about how do we create a business model in order to de de um, deliver this value proposition to our customers. And then the final uh, two lectures are really about the strategy so by the end of this uh, module, you'll be in a position to create a new business case and a new proposition to something that you could potentially launch within your business. So that's really an overview. And I do hope that uh, you, you are looking forward to joining the course. So what are we going to talk about today? So as I say, this is a mini lesson, so it's going to be a bit interactive. But what I hope you'll take away from today's session is a real understanding of what we mean by a business model. So there's lots of terms. Uh, this, this is used often in business, but actually not everyone understands fully uh, what the concept's all about. We're going to look at the key component parts of the business model, and we'll be looking at a framework today called the business model canvas. Um, I'm sure it's some of you have come across this already, um, but it really breaks down the business model into nine component parts, nine building blocks. And it's really about understanding how these all align in order to deliver this value, this new value proposition to customers. Um, we're going to understand the purpose and the benefits and why it's useful and how it can help you as a, as a leader or an executive within your company. Um, and, and many uh, global, manner, uh, global companies are using this framework. And then we're going to have a short discussion for about 10 minutes at the end on how uh, digitalization really can enhance uh, different aspects of the business model. Um, and as William said, we can do the Q&A at the end. So we've got about 15 minutes if there's any burning questions that we don't cover during today's session. So I'm now going to move on to the, the main uh, content of today's lecture. So um, just some introductions to start off. But what we're going to do now is we're going to delve a bit deeper and we're going to look at uh, business models. So as I say, I'm going to get you thinking. Um, so I would like uh, some chat conversation. Um, so some audience participation, if we can, please. Um, what is a business model to you? So I'd really like to just uh, uh, get a feel for the room, get a feel for your understanding at this point. Um, if you can put some comments in the chat, don't be shy. Um, and William, will, me and William will have a look through those. But if we can get some ideas of what people think at this point a business model is, and don't be afraid, um, you know, there are, there, are a few, there are a few definitions, but I'd like to see if, if people do have a feel for a business model before we start on, on this conversation and we move further forward with the, the topic. So um, I'll open my chat function and I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a think. 
and uh, let's see who's brave enough to go first. Yep, let's leave a minute or, or two for people to brainstorm in the in the chat. It doesn't have to be a full a full a full definition. You Just can put you, you can put a couple of sentences in there, a, a sentence, a bullet point, anything that springs to mind when we talk about business models. Anyone come with any preconceived ideas? I think people are really thinking deep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave a minute. We see plenty of new people joining, which is great. <laughs> but no one, yeah. no one seems to be. Uh, I don't keen. see the, the first most brave one to to write the definition. Okay, so I'll carry on. That's fine. Yes. Um, so it was just a uh, just to see if you uh, had any ideas. But let's let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. Um, and I'm sure you probably already know some of this. But let's uh, let's move on uh, to some uh, information here. Oh. Uh, I have someone with a hand up. Are we able to? Yep, here is Sasha. Sasha, can you write in the chat? I think we've got the if sound you're... disabled, haven't we? The Yes. Please write in the in the chat if you're raising your hand for the what's the business model. And for everything that that Sandra will cover at the end, we'll have a, a quiz. So if if there are people without background knowledge on this on this on this topic, don't be discouraged on one side because you're here to learn. But we want to see if if any of of you want to define them them first. So here. I'm I'm, I'm going to give away the answer now, William. So um so what I wanted to um explain really in terms of um, when we're talking about business models. Um, the, the original um, concept was really um, from Osterwilder and Pignor in 2005 and they they wrote um, an academic paper. They looked at all the extensive research that had been done around business models and um, they came up with this um, definition. So this is an academic definition and it was a conceptual tool containing a set of objects, concepts and the relationships to express the business logic of a firm. So what does that actually mean? So that's quite, quite, um, quite technical and quite complex. But what they did um, following this research is they actually wrote a book um, in 2010 called Business Model Generation. So if you are interested in this topic, um, I don't get any commission for sales of this book, I promise you. But if you're interested, um, I would suggest you have a look. It's very practical, um, very easy to follow book on business models. And in this book, they describe a business model as the way that a company creates, delivers and captures value based on its strategic choices. So really a business model, if someone says to you, what do you mean by a business model? It's not just about making money or how you make money. It's how, it's actually a bit more um, holistic. So it's about creating value, uh, delivering value and um, capturing value. So the capturing value is obviously the revenue model. So we break it down into three main elements. So we have the offering, uh, the value creation and the value capture. So that, that is what we're talking about when we, when we think about a business model. So keep that in mind, because as uh, William said, we will have a little quiz at the end of this um, and it will be an anonymous, it can be an anonymous quiz, so don't worry. Um, but keep that in mind as we, as we move through the, uh, the rest of the slides. So I'm going to move on now to talk about the business model canvas. So the business model canvas, it's a conceptual framework. So it's a tool 
um, that has been developed through, um, as I say, Osterwalder and Pignor looked at all the business model literature. They looked at all the different types of business models that are out there and they created this business model canvas. So it's been um, it's been looked at by academics, but it's also been looked at by industry. Um, and there are other frameworks. So I'm not just saying this is the only business model framework, but it's a very good tool to use. And as I say, companies like IBM, Ericsson use this tool to really help them um, create a blueprint really for, for strategy. So it's a, it's a tool to help you understand if you want to um, deliver value to your customers, what are the key components you need to include within your business model? So I'm just going to go through these um, briefly now. So when we're thinking about the business model canvas, the first thing we need to look at is customer segments. So if you're already in business, I'm sure you're already familiar with uh, customer segments, the target customers that you're dealing with. Um, or if you're starting up a business, you're probably thinking about who you're going to target for, for your new um, services or products products or bundles that you're going to offer the value to your customers. So you can do this on a different basis. You could be looking at um, demographics, psychographics, uh, value driven. So it's really about creating a group of people who will have a similar response to your value proposition. So then we move on to look at the value proposition. And this is the middle part. This is the key building block in the middle. And this is the, the value that you're offering to your customers. So it's, it's really the services and it's the products and it could be the bundle of services and products that are the value that you're creating and you're going to be delivering to your customers. So then we move on to the channels. And when we're thinking about channels, what do we need for this business model to work? So how do we deliver this value? And what we look at is we look at the distribution channels, we look at sales channels, and we look at marketing channels generally. And then above that, we have what we call the, the customer relationships. So the customer relationships are how you deal with your customers. Um, these could be, uh, depending on the nature of the business, depending on the industry, um, this could be on a one-to-one -one basis, so very much direct uh, contact, or you could uh, it could be self-service so you know it could be um, on a website and they just come and buy the product or service and you have very little um, interaction and engagement with the customers. Um, the bottom is the revenue streams so this is the, the bit that people always think about when they think about business models it's about making money how do you profitably make money and how do you capture that value so there's lots of different um, revenue models or revenue streams you could think about is it a subscription type business um, or do you pay off do you pay for one-off assets or is it pay per use? There's lots of different revenue models depending on the business and depending on the customer base. So if we move over to the left-hand side here, so we've got the key resources. So this is really the, the infrastructure and the architecture within the firm. So this is things such as the intellectual property. It could be the physical resources. You might need a bricks and mortar shop, or it could be um, um, human resources, the people that you need in the business. Um, and then the activities are really the key activities you need to create, uh, you need to carry out in order to create the value. So this could be production if you're manufacturers, or it could be um, um, simply the, the marketing function. Um, so or the platform management, again, depending on the type of business that you're operating in. Um, and then we have on the left hand side, the key partnerships. So this is a network of partnerships of companies and the suppliers that you need to engage with and you need to collaborate with in order to make the value proposition um, deliver that value proposition and make this this whole business model work. And then the final part um, is the cost structure. So how much is it all going to cost? So when you come up with a, a business model canvas, what you're really doing is creating this blueprint for a strategy that you're going to be able to deliver the value value proposition to to customers. So that's a very quick um, intro but, um, to the business model canvas. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a very short video. It's about three minutes long and it's going to look at Lego as an example. So there's a little tutorial on the business model uh, canvas and how to use that. Um, and I'm sure you've uh, you've either all played with Lego when you were younger or you, you've uh, you've got nieces, nephews, friends, children who get Lego out. So it's still a very popular uh, toy uh, even today. So I'm gonna just move on to the, the video. Welcome to the Business Model Canvas tutorial based on a case of Lego. Get your post-its ready, we'll be using them a lot. Step 1. First section is about your customer segments. To whom do you add value? In Lego's case, these are children. Other segments are the parents, grandparents and retailers. 
Step two. The next section is about your value propositions. Here you ask yourself, what problem do I solve for my customers? Or what needs do I fill in? Each segment uses a different color so you can see which value proposition belongs to which customer segment. The value proposition for Lego is creative playtime. Other value propositions are for children. Build what you want to build and experiment. For the parents and grandparents, it's high quality educational toys and easy to obtain. The value proposition for the retailers is that Lego draws people to your shop and that Lego supplies nice store decoration material. Step 3. This section is about your revenue streams. What do you make money from? For Lego, these are the toys they sell. Other revenues are from the movies and the merchandise. Step four. Now we're going to talk about your customer relations. Ask yourself this question. How do I stay top of mind? And how do I signal changing customer needs? Lego relies on their strong brand the Lego Club and Lego's Design By Me program. Step 5. The fifth section is about your channels. How do you make sure your products or services end up with your customers? In this case, it's the retail channel, the online channel, and the television films and series. The right side of the canvas represents the creation side. The left side tells you how you can deliver value as an organization. Step 6. The first section on this side is about your core business. Here you must ask yourself what the most important activities are within your organization to create value. With Lego, it's the production and development. Besides that, marketing and sales are important as well as distribution and storytelling around their brand and stories they tell with the products. Step 7. Ask yourself what key resources you have in-house as an organization to deliver your value. In the case with Lego, the following applies to them. The brand, the designers of Lego, the factories, and the licenses for the stories they create. Step 8. This section is about your partners. What partners do you need to be able to deliver your value proposition? The involved users of the products that ask for new designs are important partners, next to movie producers, game developers, and entertainment companies. Step 9. The last section is about your cost structure. What are your biggest costs? The biggest costs for Lego are the production and development costs. Salaries, marketing and sales, and royalties are also important costs. Now we have a complete view of the business model canvas of Lego. Time to fill in your own. Great. So I think that was a really good tutorial on the use of the business model canvas and how that uh, applies for Lego. So I'm going to go through this um, this table now. So I think it's quite important to think about how um, how we use the business model canvas and how the business model canvas is different to a traditional business plan. Um, so the business model canvas, as you see, it's a one uh, one page. It's very visual, and it's a really about a high level plan on how you intend to operate your business um, profitably within a specific market. Um, so it, when you're creating a, a business model, you can use the business model canvas to create a new business model, or you can also use the business model canvas to review existing business models and spot any gaps or problems within the business model. Um, so let's have a look at the table. I'm not going to go through uh, every line in detail, but I think it's quite um, quite a useful um, comparison, really. So when we talk about the business model canvas, what we're doing, really visualizing and reviewing these business models. So the purpose is um, for um, co-creation within the team. You get everyone together. It's very interactive. You can get the management team in a room for a morning or an afternoon, and you can go through this and create a very high level plan on, on a new um, value proposition and how you might deliver that value proposition to customers. With a, with a business plan, whether it's a, a pragmatic business plan for, for yourself to just give a roadmap of where you're going um, or a formal business plan, obviously you're, you're looking for um, a different outcome. So it might be that you're really just looking um, for a formal business plan to raise funds or, or, or loan for the business. 
as I say, the audience is very different. So the business model canvas would be for maybe internal team. Um, and the, ex uh, the the formal business plan is obviously for external investors and, and potential bank managers if you're looking to raise finance. Um, business model canvas tends to be quite short term, um, whereas the business plan is a, is a long term um, document. And the business plan is really a very much a detailed uh, document on how you're going to run and operate the business and a full strategy behind it. So what I would say is the business model canvas is really, um, in my mind, I think, the foundation and the first step to um, to do before you would actually go forward to create a full business plan. So you might find that you create the canvas and actually there's many gaps and you, you might actually decide not to go ahead um, with the with the business idea based on on you know one morning whereas you could spend uh, many months writing a business plan and then discover there's some holes in in your uh, thinking and uh, obviously that is a a big waste of time and, and resource um, and as i say the business model canvas is fun it's highly interactive um, it's very easy to use and you can use that with the team obviously you can bring in a facilitator but many companies would use this in-house um, when they're, they're looking at uh, new product development and new uh, service innovation so just wanted to to um highlight those differences. Um, so we're going to move on now to, uh, again, we'll have a go at the chat. I think we might have had a chat issue. So I'm hoping that we might get some, <laughs> might get some, uh, some uh, answers in the chat this time. We'll give it a go. Um, so when we talk about the business models, um, we've talked about the business model canvas, which is one framework. Um, there are many, but actually not all businesses are exactly the same. So when we when we're creating um, a business model, we have different types of business model that exist. Um, so they have a different focus. And again, it, it's very much dependent on um, how they're creating and delivering this value to their customers. So. I'm going to give you a clue. Let's uh, let's give you a clue to start off with. I've got about ten answers on on my PowerPoint here, um, but what what um, what we looked at just with the the Lego example is they they had a, a couple of different uh, customer groups that they they uh, targeted to different customer segments. So one of those was the retailers. So I would say um, that Lego are operating what we call a B two B business model. So they are selling from their business direct to other businesses who are the retailers. So that is actually one type of business model. Um, another type of business model that um, you could say that Lego are operating is a business to consumer uh, business model. So it's a B2C business model. And um, these are when the um, companies are selling direct to the end users or the, 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 the consumers. So with uh, Lego, they have a, a Lego land where they sell the products um, direct to the end users, or they also sell through their own website directly to their customers. So that's a couple of examples. Um, but there are many more. And you may have, um, you know, you may have heard these uh, different terms or, or different types of business model. So I, I don't know if anyone wanted to be uh, brave and put in the chat any ideas and then we can uh, have a have a look at how that compares to what I have on here and you might have some more examples as well to share. So anybody come across a different types of business model. So think of the example business to business, business to consumer, anything else you think is a type of business model that a company might want to operate. You can put your answers in the chat. No answers so far. <laughs> Maybe here's oh, Anastasia, yes. a subscription-based model. Thank you very model. much. Yes, subscription-based model. And that was actually number one on my list. So well done. So yeah, a subscription-based model is very much a, a recurring fee that you pay it on a regular basis. Um, I think we should give prizes for this, actually, William. <laughs> uh, maybe next time. Um, so... Oh, we're having an issue with the, the sound with someone over there. Um, so yeah, subscription-based model. Um, yeah, so an uh, example would be um, sort of streaming services. You may pay on a monthly basis. Um, uh, Pay-as-you-go model. Yeah, uh, pay-as-you-go. Yeah, definitely. So that, that would be a pay-per-use. So pay-as-you-go. So you would pay on the usage. So for example, utilities. So you're paying based on the amount of um, gas or electricity you might use. Um, perfect. Yeah, franchise-based model. Brilliant. So franchise-based model is really where you give a license to a, another company to operate under your own 
um, under their brand. So uh, McDonald's, for example, everyone uh, everyone recognises McDonald's. Um, we have on demand. I'm not quite sure on that one, uh, Nicola. If you want to maybe expand a little bit in in the in the chat, what you mean by on demand? Because uh, um, it could be right. I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just I'm not quite sure. If you don't mind explaining that one and freemium, yeah, perfect. So a uh, freemium model, again, you get a basic version of the the, um, the services uh, for free, and then you can pay for additional services or additional features. So Duolingo, for example, I think I managed to use Duolingo for about five years on the free basis and uh, got fed up with all the adverts. And then I did start to pay for the, the premium <laughs> version eventually. So uh, that's a good, uh, that was a very good freemium model. So thank you. I think we've got any more down there, McDonald's. Uh, Franchise model, yep, yeah, McDonald's, thank you. Brilliant, well, thank you very much for those. Um, that all looks great. So I've just, oh, the direct consumer model, the franchise model, the aggregator business model, the affiliate marketing model, and wrapping up Marina. Is wrapping up a model, I'm, is that, I, I'm not sure on that one. If you want to pop a bit more of an explanation on the wrapping up, that would be helpful. But thank you. Yeah, direct to consumer, model franchise, aggregator, affiliate marketing. Yeah, great. So, uh, yeah, so thank you very much for, for those uh, inputs into that. I have got, I'll just share my list as well and uh, let's see how we compare. So I think you've already got a few of these already. So we had subscription-based e-commerce model. I think to be honest, most companies now have an element of e-commerce um, anyway. So um, perhaps not pure e-commerce models, but um, obviously selling uh, products and services online to um, consumers. We, we had the freemium model. We talked about the example of uh, Duolingo, uh, platform models, uh, pay per use, yeah, based on consumption, franchise, direct sales. Uh, one that didn't come up actually in the chat was the sharing economy. So this is like um, Airbnb. Um, so it's a peer to peer uh, type business model. And then the two uh, very traditional uh, business models that I think everyone's uh, familiar with is the, the B2C and uh, the B2B models. So yeah, that was just really to give you an idea of the different types of business models that exist. But thank you for the, the participation. So I'm going to move on just a couple of examples. So as I say, the module that um, I'm leading on is all around a digital transformation, organizational transformation, and especially how companies are using uh, different elements, of their business models and, and using technology to enhance their business models. So these two examples are two examples that we do cover in a lot more detail during the module. Um, but I just wanted to discuss these with you because I think they're companies that everybody knows. Um, so Netflix, um, is a really a, a subscription-based business model. Um, so you uh, pay to access um, the vast library that they have of videos, documentaries, um, and, and other content, and then you can stream on demand from any type of device. Um, it, it really has invested very heavily in the content library. So um, that's one of its uh, one of the value propositions is this um, original content. So. Um, things like Stranger Things and they've, they've created a lot of original content and become much more than just a, a streaming service for other um, other production companies. Um, and then obviously the, this um, a big element that's been um, really successful with Netflix is this personalization and uh, really using recommendation algorithms to understand uh, user behavior and uh, adapting the um, marketing messages and marketing um, communications. So this, these channels that they're using to um, engage with and deliver the services to to customers has been particularly successful um, and in terms of the revenue models obviously they offer flexible plans um, and really they, they focused on this continuous innovation so I think um, they've they've really uh, excelled uh, although um, not without uh, challenges over the last few years um, with this um, subscription-based streaming service offering this wide variety of quality content and really leveraging technology as an enabler for their business model so I think the company uh, last count has got a revenue of 31 0.6 billion in 2002 obviously they had a surge of um, 
subscribers early COVID um, and now the market is extremely competitive so there's been a lot of um, you know I'd say probably they had first mover advantage they were one of the best in the market at the time but there's been a lot of competition coming into this space so they are now struggling a little bit more for for subscribers but they are a good example of a, a company that has used um, technology and digital innovation to really strengthen uh, and enhance and differentiate themselves um, and gain competitive advantage in the in the market and and the other example um, I've got to share with you tonight is Uber um, and I know uh, you didn't have Uber when I was in uh, Macedonia last time but I know you have uh, very similar uh, services um, so I'm, I'm sure you, you're all familiar with the the concept of um, you know this digital platform that's connecting drivers through the mobile app again they were they were one of the first I don't know if they were the first um, in the space but obviously um, they, there was a number of elements of um, digital technology um, they were able to really um, utilize in order to make this a really successful business model so obviously the GPS tracking um, obviously security for, for the drivers and security for um, the um, the riders and also being able you know the convenience the cashless payments um, and I think uh, one of the things that is a, a benefit to the drivers more than the, the riders is obviously the dynamic pricing and all of this is based on on data data analytics um, and understanding um, you know creating pricing strategies um, looking at improving driver efficiency um, so really and, and again like Netflix they're gradually having this global reach so again it's traditional both of these are, were traditional industries obviously we had uh, Netflix came on board originally with the video um, and, and obviously not blockbuster out the market and uh, and they've completely changed that industry um, again Uber um, again traditional taxi mobility industry and now they've um, really sort of disrupted this traditional transport industry so two companies um, not without controversy not without challenges but both of them have um, really used digital as a enabler um, to enable the business models and and also to to make them successful global companies that um you know weren't probably around uh i think that they haven't been around that long last uh well i think netflix last 20 years or so but uber much more recently in the market so i just wanted to share a couple of examples before we move on um and then the last section formal section of uh, today's uh, workshop session is really about thinking about digital. So I've talked a little bit there about how digital technologies can enhance the business model. And um, hopefully um, you have now a fairer understanding of what we mean when we're talking about the business model. Um, so we're going to we're going to think about um, the advantages and disadvantages of the scripture model because none of these business models come without uh, challenges. And then we will talk about digitalization and how that can enhance the business model before we move into the, the quick uh, quiz today. So um, again, if you want to put in the chat, so there's some there's some brave souls out in the audience now. I can see you've already started to participate. Um, and as I say, the sessions, when you do come on the module, we will be very much two way um, because I do want to hear from the students and I know sometimes the students we actually learn from each other so what do you think the advantages and challenges are so we've talked about the subscription business model so if we take for example the Netflix example um, do you see any anything about that business model that gave them an advantage or gives them currently an advantage do anyone like to put any ideas in the chat it's a bit of a more difficult question now because we're getting to the end of uh, end of the session but any ideas on um you know what what why would this be an advantage or if you were to create a subscription model why would this be an advantage for you as a company any ideas oh Thank you. I'm getting some good answers now. Um, it's available almost for everyone. OK, so, yeah, um, I think I get what you're saying. So if you've got a subscription model, you can sort of do different packages within that model. So you could do um, different tiers, maybe. So it makes it um, available for everybody. Um, steady and predictable income. Yeah, perfect. Star student tonight. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, definitely. So if, if you're a if you're a company and um, you're offering a subscription model, obviously as a business you're getting recurring revenue and you can predict that revenue as well. So that's a, that's a really good um, good point. 
any disadvantages so what why would you why would this might be a disadvantage for you do you think that's a bit more tricky OK, so I'm going to reveal the answers. Thank you for those who had, had a go there. So or each type of business model has an advantage and disadvantages. So it's not a case of one size fits all. We create a business model and then that's it. Um, we just keep running it the same as we always have done. There's going to be challenges for every type of business model. So what we do, we have to put strategies in place to mitigate these challenges. So when we are um, operating a business, we're on top of this all the time. Um, and one of the things that's changing all the time is digital um, innovation technology. So we have to really keep on top of this. So um, we already had uh, the answer there that one of the advantages are it's a predictable and steady revenue stream. So recurring payments, you know what's coming in every month um, and also if you do a good job of delivering the value proposition, so if Netflix continue to create um, really good content and they have a really good price, people forget about paying the monthly fee. They may do <laughs> or they may not. But um, you can create strong customer retention and loyalty because you're having regular contact, regular communications uh, with your with your customer base. So it's not a one off transactional sale. It's happening all the time. And then uh, like the uh, the freemium model, uh, the advantage are that you can upsell. Um, so if you have um, new um, services, new products, new offers, you're able to reach out to your existing customer base who you have a sort of long term uh, relationship with. So they're sort of you know tied in for perhaps 12 months or so within a, within a subscription basis. And um, then you can reach out and offer them additional services so you can increase your revenue through a subscription based business model. Um, the challenges, however, um, and I, I have uh, touched on this slightly already, is that there's a high competition in this space. So just thinking about Netflix again, um, you know, there's lots of streaming services now and people are much more um, ready to jump on to a different service if it's, you know, they, they reduce the price or they offer six months uh, at reduced, uh, reduced rate. So there's quite a high churn and, and they have to really continually invest in keeping this value proposition really compelling for, for their audience. Um, and also, they, as I say, it's, it's about continuous innovation. It's about keeping users happy and understanding that. And that's, you know, it's expensive business and it's, it's a difficult business um, to be in. So, um, you know, you do have to keep your subscribers happy all the time. It's not just a case of selling them one thing once. It's a continuous relationship. And then finally, it's really about balancing um, the offering. So you want to offer enough value, um, keep subscribers happy but you've got to be careful not to overwhelm them with excessive features so I just wanted to to share that with you as an example of how um, a business model can um, be both advantageous and give you competitive advantage but you've also got to mitigate against other factors if you decide that this is the type of business model you'd like to operate in your business or within your company so we're going to have a, a say we've got a, a few minutes now just to have a quick discussion on um, digitalization and how it can enhance the different aspects of a business model. So, again, last question on this before we move into the quiz um, and the quiz is multiple choice. So um, it, it's not a, it's not a, a, too tricky, but um, have a think about um, the nine building blocks. So we went through um, we looked at what does a business model entail? What what is the key components of a business model? Model. Um, and we understand we've got the value proposition right at the center there and then we've got the customer segments we're, we're, and then all these um, channels so all of these different elements can be enhanced through um, technology and the use of a digital technology and digital disruption um, so are there any things you can think of now in terms of a business model or, or a business operating in general that could be enhanced through um, the process of digitalization? So if you're thinking about digitalization, think of it really as the integration of technology into all areas of a business. So would anyone like to um, have a go at this and let's see what we can what we can get in the chat? Meanwhile, while, while we are waiting we had a couple of answers for the challenges uh from ivona competitive pressure 
Martina providing a seamless user e experience. Anastasia again increasing competition, high cancellation rate for the subscription base model. Dragana continual requirement to offer something new and valuable. Perfect. Yeah. Great. So if you do come on the program, you already know half the answers. So they've got some uh, good minds already in the audience. Um, yeah, so very good. Thank you for those. So no, no takers on digitalization, enhancing different aspects of the business model. So I've got a few on the slide. Um, as I say, today is just a real mini, mini um, lecture and a, a mini um, tasted lesson. So it's not, um, de it, we're not going into lots of depth, but when we, would be running the few, uh, future module, it will be um, a class discussion. So um, just to, to give you some food for thought on a Thursday evening, um, let's reveal some of the things that we have here. So we've talked about customer experience and user experience, and also these um, personalized um, relationships that you can develop with your customers. So using digital technology um, helps you um, with um, this personalized interaction with customers. And, you know, if you can make things more personable and understand individual needs, you're able to offer a much more enhanced service and uh, create greater loyalty and also uh, revenue streams for the business. Um, expansion of reach and accessibility of products and services. I think most companies now are offering um, products and services online. Obviously, it depends uh, where you're located. It might be difficult if you've got you produce very big, heavy products to distribute them all over the globe. But actually, um, you know, you're expanding, expanding your reach and your customer base and the, the types of customers that you're able to, uh, the segments that you're able to, to focus on. Um, optimization of operational efficiency. So if you are a manufacturing or production company, um, enhancing the um, operational efficiency uh, within the production line, understanding the uh, through automation um, and also things in um, administration. Um, obviously, we, we haven't even touched on this today, but AI um, at the moment is going to be able to automate an awful lot of um, administrative type tasks and even marketing. Um, so it's, it's going to be huge across all industries and uh, that automation hopefully will improve efficiency and productivity um, for many businesses and, and help um, and help them gain competitive advantage. Uh, new revenue streams uh, through digital products or services. So you can now offer, um, you know, content um, online uh, services only um, different types of value proposition um, through digital. Um, so there's is an opportunity to serve existing customers uh, with new products and services using uh, technology as an enabler there and then finally it's about analyzing and understanding your customers better so you can get much closer to your customers uh, much um, you know in the past people had to do focus groups and workshops and face-to-face -face, um, communication you've got the opportunity to, to talk to anyone anywhere in the world um, and, and really understand um, deeply um, customer behavior, and that will help um, creating better products, better services, better user experience, so it will benefit all. So that's just a, a very quick uh, snapshot into some of the uh, key um, changes that are gonna happen. Um, and many, many of this, much of this is happening right now. Um, and uh, it, it's really um, thinking about, you know, what's going to happen in the, the near future as well and how businesses and organisations are going to be changing uh, given uh, the, the technology and the advancements that we're experiencing at the moment. So that is actually the end of the formal session, but please do not go away because <laughs> we have plenty more in store for you. Um, so I'm just going to move on to um, this next screen here. So we have uh, what we call a mentee quiz for you. Uh, it is a multiple choice and it is quite good fun. I've already tested it out on Philip and William the other day and they both did very well. Um, so I, I'm gonna ask you now, I think uh, William's put in the chat, uh, you need to just, I'm just gonna change my um, screen uh, so I can put on the mentee quiz for you. But if you go to mentee.com um, and there's a number to put in, you can do it on your phone, uh, you can do it on your uh, mobile phone or you can do it on your laptop. I'll just get the quiz set up for you and uh, we will start. It is uh, voluntary, but as I say, you can anonymize it so nobody knows who you are. Um, I think it's here. If I share this and uh, quickly present. 
So you should now, oh, we have a number of players. Excellent, everyone's in the room. Uh, William, are we able to see the right screen? Uh, question one of yes. five, perfect. Yes, perfect. Um, so yeah, I'll just let a few players get into the room. So yeah, we've got 13, 12, 12 in there. So plenty of space for a few more if you'd like to join in. I'll give you a minute um, just to get on. When Sandra showed me the the quiz, it was more fun than I than I thought. So, <laughs> so have a go. Yeah. Yep. Oh, we're getting plenty coming in. So I'll just give you one one minute or so more, because it just so you can get in here. I do like the little uh, icons that they use. <laughs> a koala, a bumblebee, a unicorn. That's quite cool. Oh, I think we, we get we seem to be getting one or two and then losing one or two. <laughs> so we're at nineteen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna when we get to twenty, maybe we'll start the quiz. Okay, we're at we're at twenty one, so I think twenty two. Okay, if anyone's having difficulty, pop in the chat. But I think we might start now. Okay, so we're going to start the the quiz now. Um, so first question, so you have to answer as fast as you can. Uh, what is a business model? So have you been listening tonight? Um, so one of three options, how a company creates, delivers and captures value, a long-term business plan, or is it a type of revenue model? Place your votes now. Uh, fantastic. So we have 12 people who got that right. So it is, in fact, the way a company creates, delivers and captures value. So well done to you guys who were listening. Uh, obviously, it's not a long term business plan. We did look at the, um, the, the table. It's really a foundation for the business plan. And uh, Revenue models come into the bit. They do come into the, the business model canvas, if you remember, but it's not it's not the full business, uh, the business model. So well done to those that got that right. Let's move on to question number two. We have a few more players have joined us. So let's uh, let's let's go. Again, it's fastest finger first. So what is the business model canvas used for? So we've talked about the business model canvas. This is the conceptual framework um, that helps you understand the key building blocks of the business model. So we're using this for uh, visualizing and reviewing business models. Are we using it to get loans or fundraise? Or is it really just to give us a holistic view of the overall business? So, OK, brilliant. So majority got it right again. So it's about visualizing and reviewing business models. So it's a tool very visual, one page, you can do it as a group, co-create with your team and really think about all the elements you need to deliver value to your customers. So let's move on to the next question. Question number three, pass this finger first. Which of the following is not a building block of the business model canvas? So we've got the nine building blocks. So you're trying to think back to 20 to 25 minutes ago, what we're talking about. Is it value proposition? Is it the segments or is it the customer needs? Which of this is not a building block in the business model canvas? We've got three seconds, have a go. Okay, that was a quite a hard one actually, because um, majority have got it right so well done um but yes we we do have the value proposition in the middle we have the customer segments but the customer needs would really probably come under the customer value proposition so we're, we're trying to address and um, when we're creating a value proposition we're really trying to address those customer needs so what we, we when we come on to look at customer value proposition design uh, we will understand that actually we're trying to look at the customer pains and uh, and uh, alleviate those pains um to, to meet the needs and create a solution for our customer so well done who to those who got that right and we have question number four What type of business model does Netflix have? Is it subscription based? Is it a B2B model or is it franchise model? So think back to the example. Brilliant. 
So majority of people got that right. So yeah, it is a it is a subscription based bundle. So people are paying a recurring fee every month to access the content library, the documentaries, and the 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 um mo uh, movies that they have. So yeah, subscription based uh, business model. And the the last question for the quiz, um, I'm I'm actually enjoying this guy. So interested to see what you think of the last question. Uh, let's let's kick off. Fastest finger first. What type of business model does Uber have? So we've looked at Netflix. What did we say? Think back on the, the slide when we talked about Uber. Was it direct sales? Was it business to business? Or was it a digital platform model? What do you think? So it's a digital platform model. So if you think about um, it's connecting the drivers, it's connecting the drivers with the riders, and it's using the app as the um, enabler, as a platform to, to make that, those connections and obviously GPS technology, cashless systems. So uh, it's not direct sales, it's, it's, it's about a business platform is the predominant um, way that business operates. So that was the end of the quiz. Let's have a, a look at the leaderboard. Oh, so some people did put their real names, so well done. Oh, it's very close. It's very close. Oh, congratulations, Sashka. Well done. You are the winner today. So congratulations on, on, on that. So brilliant. Well, thank you for participating. A yeah, big round of applause for you. Thank you. And uh, I'll just change my uh, screen share. I think we'll go back to the, the main presentation now. So I'll just come out of here. And uh, I'll just move on to the main slides. And we'll just move on to, I just wanted to mention on this slide, I've got some further resources to so some of the references that I've mentioned, um, particularly the, the, uh, the paper, the academic paper that um, looked at all of the business models is uh, is here. Um, if you're interested in the book, uh, Business Model Generation, there's a, there's a reference here. Um, so it's very highly visual. And um, another um, reference I've added on here is the Value Proposition Design Book. And this is um, this will be very useful if you do decide to join us at the Academy, because we will be designing a vis uh, biz um, customer value proposition using the process within this book as well. So um, if you if you have a chance to note those or take a photograph of that now or come back to the recording and you can see it later. So um, uh, just to say uh, it was a very much a, a mini lesson today, but thank you for participating. Um, I hope to meet you um, on the, the, the module. I'm really looking forward to, uh, well, quite excited about October when the, the programme starts. Um, and uh, if you wanted to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, I would be more than happy to do so. So please do find me on, on LinkedIn and we can carry on the conversation about business models. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I'll pass over to William. Thank you very much, Sandra. I hope everyone it, it, it enjoyed the lesson as as much as I as I did. Thank you very much for all the effort that you that you put into into the lecture. Um, I before we dive deep into the into the Q and A part, uh, please please write all your questions in the in the chat. I will move over to as I mentioned in the in the beginning to um, cover some couple of, of, of things about the academy, the questions that we receive. And I'm sure some, some of you here are because you're interested into enrolling. I'll make make sure to to keep it very sh short, about three minutes or or so. So first thing um or one of the most important things who are going to be your in, in instructors and guys, here, uh, as you can see on the on the slides, um, I'll read the names, but you'll you'll you are learning from people who are doing it, not just academics, but people in the in the business battlefield battlefield who are experts in their in their industry and really implementing what what they're teaching with more than than ten years of experience and and really giving you industry insights and and what is what is trending right now 
as you can see, the first instructor you you listen to today, Sandra Sandra Benbo. Uh, second, Daniel Daniel Bogner, who is team leader at Niras International Consulting, twenty five years of experience. Plus, Petar Nilski, who is the founder and CEO of Brainster. Ioannis, who is CEO at New Life at Greece. Blagoj Kostovski, technology line manager, more than 50, 15 years of experience. Ivana Pejak, who is human resources director at Media Group Serbia. Jo Joana, who is founder at Hinker Training Hub. And Lydia, who is chef, chief executive director in the real estate industry and 18 plus years of experience so these are these are the the people who are who are going to guide you guide you and mentor on the academy uh on the topic of modules i'll i'll very briefly go go through the eight eight modules and later i'll send you a link where you can you can read more uh on the module one it is named leading digital and organizational transformation here you're you're going to really understand the digital di disruption, the impact uh, that that technology has, and how it is reshaping the business environment, and most more importantly, how to adapt your business model to to this. Second, personal leadership: how to uh, discover your authentic leadership style, and also how to build your your support network of coaches, mentors and leaders and in development third people leadership so the second was personal personal leaderships now moving to people people leadership uh here understand how to shape your organizational and people culture of course to maximize talent drive performance become a results based organization also how to align talent talent management with your strategic goals for for your company of course learn how to lead a remote and hybrid hybrid teams fourth organizational leaderships so how to create a strategy that is flexible agile that drives innovation and it is in line with your organizational resources and and priorities and how to lead your organization during uncertain times and become a change leader. Moving over, fifth, lean management and continuous improvement. Learn the fundamentals of, of uh, lean management and, uh, of course, step-by-step -step introduction to the types of waste, the value value stream, stream mapping differences between continuous improvement and radical improvement, So and how you can approach this as an organization marketing in the digital era here um, the module we want to give you the concepts of both traditional and digital marketing their strong and weak sides and weak sides and how you can make them work for for your for your business model um, also holistic approach to the marketing tools and and channels and how you can drive the highest roi um ROAS as it says on the on the slide uh, how to manage and measure the effectiveness of your marketing efforts and campaigns sixth strategic financial leaderships leadership sorry here you're you're going to learn how to evaluate and improve your company's performance by analyzing its financial statements and recognizing where you can improve where is it uh, the the um, most um, where are they are uh, the strengths and the weaknesses some red flags and how to how to address those with uh, strategy and last business and data data analytics specifically for executives uh, here you you're going to understand uh, in the real world why is it why is data important and how to access it process it transform it and make it ready for ai and how to how to exploit patterns and use the data to forecast future events next i linked here some additional 
resources which i will link in the chat and also tomorrow we'll uh, send you in the in the email with the recording from this event um here you can you, you can read more on the topic of of leadership of management and all the on the last last picture as you see meet some of some of our students on the on the academy such as natalie who is co-founder and creative director at yoa here i will i will end this 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 presentation and for everyone interested to to book a call and learn more if you are eligible for for a scholarship or learn more about the the program the schedule or or anything else i will send a link in the in in the chat and um once again say that um as a as a as a note that this academy is designed to give you um mba level knowledge for the for the fraction of of the time and and um money cost because you're learning from from people directly from the industry and the duration of course it is it is shorter to to have the most implementable action packed stuff that that you can have so ending it here i will send a link in the in the chat for everyone who wants to to go to the next step meanwhile i am um me and sandra are waiting for questions that you that you had throughout the the presentation or anything on the topic that we that we cover today i see one from from sashka already what is your opinion about digital transformation in the legal profession very good question thank you very much uh, for your questions i presume you're working in the legal profession yourself and um, i think there are lots of um uh, potential uh, benefits that will come through um, digital technology within the legal sector. I think um, any um, um, professional services in, in general, I think there's going to be lots of opportunity for improving efficiency, um, enhancing customer relationships and, and really deepening insights into understanding customers. So I think from a I mean, from a, a, a firm wide perspective, there's going to be lots of opportunities in terms of, of marketing and engaging with customers using um, digital and data analytics and AI. But I think automation is probably going to be one of the key um, um, benefits of, um, of of technology within the legal profession. So, um, so I'm not I'm not a lawyer and I, I don't work in the legal profession. But I think things such as contracts, uh, signatures, uh, automations, contract re reviews and renewals. So anything that could be easily automated, um, I think, will be a, a, a real um, benefit in terms of efficiency. Um, I can't see um, AI taking over uh, the role of lawyers anytime soon. Um, but I think um, I think it's really about improving customer relationships and improving or you know automating um uh manual um tasks um, and making it just more streamlined for customers and for um the, the organization and the firm to operate more productively and efficiently so i hope that helps right waiting for other other questions any more questions Thank you, Sashka. Thank you, Sashka. Let me check the chat if we had any, any questions above that we missed. We had from George for the recording. So for everyone, you will receive the recording on an email uh, tomorrow. Of course, we'll link the resources covered 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 today. Let's see from Petsa. It's not a question, but this lecture is very important to me for the lecture on innovation, implementing business in innovation. One way to start a business basics of business. 
Thank you. I think uh, glad you found it useful. And um, as I say, there's a, a lot more to come if you decide to join us on the on the programme. So thank you for your comment. Don't be shy, guys. I have already <laughs> five, six questions in, in, in my head that I want to ask. But I'm leaving space for, for you. Go on, William. I think you can ask me a question. <laughs> Let's see if we have any of the questions. If not, we can we can continue. All right, guys, then coming coming to, to the end, I will, of course, leave one or two, two more minutes to write the questions that you that you have in the in the chat. Meanwhile, again, I will I will say a big thank you for Sandra for preparing this this lecture and, and putting all the effort into it. I'm sure you in, enjoyed it as as much as I as I do. And I will give the closing words to to Sandra. Thank you very much, William. Yes, thank you very much uh, for attending um, on a, a Thursday evening and um, late into the evening as well. So I can see you're all very committed. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the lecture. I hope you've taken away a few uh, um, hints and tips there. And um, yeah, I really look forward to uh, meeting some of you on the Academy. So um, that's all from me. Um, and a uh, big thank you to the Brainster team for organizing it as well. So uh, that's good night from me. Thank you. Staying staying in, in contact of course, for any any questions that you have, uh, Sandra has has left her LinkedIn on the slide, and we stay in contact on either contacted Brainster Co, William at Brainster Co, or, or 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 the link that I shared in the in the chat to book a call with our admission and career consultants. Thank you guys for participating, and have a great rest of the evening. Bye bye. Bye bye.